Uh, welcome friends, welcome to the session. Today I am going to tell you a, a story. PyCon India 2012, my first open source conference. I was feeling totally out of place. I was hearing all the alien words like patch, commit, bug, etc. Suddenly I heard something familiar, license. I just ran towards the conversation and I heard all the conversation, all the legal conversations to be precise, were ending up with I-A-N-A-L. What does that mean? So, before going to the story, a statutory disclaimer. This uh, talk should, is not a legal advice. If you need a legal advice, please contact a lawyer. Uh, before the story begins, a little bit introduction of the storyteller. Hi, I'm Anvesha. I'm a lawyer by uh, I'm a lawyer by profession. I am a Pi Lady. I'm an organizer at Pi Ladies Pune from India. I use Python to shape my legal projects. I work as a blogger at Python Software Foundation. I also write a, my personal blog at anveshadas.in where I translate legalese to English. I am a I am an active force user a dancer and a mother to a toddler whose name is Pi. So the love for Python runs in the family. So back to our story, I-A-N-A-L. As I said, all the conversations, the legal conversations were having these I am not a lawyer face. After that, I saw there was some respect kind of look for me. There was some keep safe distance kind of looks for, looks for me. And not to forget some, oh, I feel sorry for you, brother, kind of look for my husband. All these things together made me interested in the legal field of the open source world. So both we lawyers and the programmers use language as a tool to achieve our goal. But both of these species does not really understand what the other is saying. So let's begin the session with the hope that we'll be able to understand each other in a better fashion after the end of the session. So what is this open source world is all about? This open source world is actually made of two things. Firstly, a technology. Secondly, a good community. A good community consists of three things. Contributor base, a very strong contributor base. Secondly, a, uh, a strong and just administration and thirdly, the strong licensing model. Here comes the tricky word license. Now let us understand what is license. So when I asked a few developers what do they understand by the term license, this is the blank look I get most of the time. Some developers told me, License is something that protects my code. It's very smart and apt. I don't care about license. It bores me. So true in most cases. A Fedora upstream said that very sadly that I have to fill up the license name unless they won't march my package in Fedora. So uh, he was very sad about the fact. So what is actually license? Uh, what does a license do? Let us take a very practical analogy. What does a driving license do? Driving license gives us the permission to drive a vehicle on the road. Similarly, a software license gives us the permission to do certain things with the software. Who gives us the driving license? It's the Motor Vehicle Authority. And in case of a software, the owner of the software gives us the gives us the permission and under what authority he gives us the permission it is the intellectual property right called copyright what is copyright now if we flip the word copyright that is right copy right to copy or right over a copy therefore the definition of copyright goes like this copyright is an exclusive right to use, distribute, 
redistribute sell the original creation granted to the creator of for a limited period of time uh, there are things like artistic work cinematography film sound recordings these are the purview of these comes under the purview of copyright so having said that it may frown some eyebrows that uh, how come software comes under the purview of copyright so uh, what does a developer do how the developer the developer solves a problem and how the developer will solve a problem it's his or hers personal choice or expression that very thing personal choice or expression makes the thing the make software copyrightable so now comes my project so as a lawyer i was in i am interested in the legal part so i uh, i just analyze something what for that i need i need to explain this a uh, slide PyPI. PyPI is the Python package index. It is the third party offic official third party repository for Python, the programming language. Presently, it has more than uh, 10 lakh, pa uh, 10 lakh, pa 10,000 packages in it. If I am not wrong, so, uh, it has 1 lakh packages in it. Sorry. Um, so, here comes my project. Uh, as a lawyer, I was very much interested in uh, how the licensing scenario works. Why, how come a developer is choosing a particular license and not choosing the other one? What makes him choose that one? How many projects are there without any license? Then I started this project. I wanted to analyze the licensing, licensing scenario of the Python ecosystem. As I said, PyPI is gigantic. I just cut it, the gigantic volume of the PyPI short a bit. I chose, I wanted to choose top 2500 packages of PyPI. Then comes the problem, which are the top 2500 packages? PyPI provides, pi, then this, uh, this, thing, uh, this thing came in. This ranking system gave me a nice list of top 2500 packages then i needed the license name pypi also provides a json api i queried that and i got the licensing name for each 2500 packages i wrote a python script for that and i got the license name after that when i got the license name this is something the scenario looks like I got all these license names and this chart which makes me understand that BSD is the most used license. After that it's the MIT, GPL as in the GPL family as a whole, all the all like GPL version, all the GPL version in it. It's 12%, both Apache is also 12% and there if you can, uh, the public domain is there and there if you can see 6% is no name. What is this no name or unknown? Where PyPI can't provide any license name, it gives unknown or no name as license value. So th there are a huge number of project, a good number of project which doesn't have a license name. So what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to send a pull request to all these packages that this this is the license you should write like you may want to write the license name and presently around 20 packages have uh, uh, 20 patches have been merged and um, it the project is still going on so now we got all the license name now let us understand what is some we know the name what is a software license a software license is a legal document it's boring i know but a software license is an instru legal instrument which gives you the permission to do certain things that is 
use of the software, how you should use the software, how you should sell the software, all these things related to the software, all these conditions are written in a software license. Software license. Now let us divide the software license. What are the what are the different kinds of software license? We are going to divide the software license in how much restriction they are putting on the users. The first one is the commercial license. The commercial software license is something which is very heavy duty and it gives uh, the users very little freedom. The source code is with the, so the owner of the software. It remains with the owner of the software, the authority usually and all the rights of the uh, of the owner uh, of the user is provided in a end users license agreement called eula the user can uh, agree to it by signing by signing it or uh, by just checking the click the, by the box there in certain places given and or by just by opening the disk that is it is called the shrink wrap or licensing the gaming software, it, uh, when you open the box, you are basically agreeing to the terms of those, that licenses. After that, it is the public domain. If commercial license is on this end, public domain stands on another pole, on another extreme. By public domain, you need to understand that public domain is not a license. When you are putting anything in public domain, what you are basically doing is that you are waiving all your rights, you are relinquishing all your intellectual property rights. Public domain, your software becomes a public property. There are basically three ways by which anything can come into a public domain. Firstly, there are certain things to which intellectual property rights does not apply. Secondly, when the time period, the uh, copyright is uh, given to the owner for a limited period of time. When the time period is over, secondly, like the time period is expired and thirdly, when you are waiving your co uh, copyright. That is by putting into public domain, submitting into public domain. How you can submit into a public domain? Firstly. You can write it as public domain, the license as public domain. Second, uh, another point uh, thing is that you can choose for unlicensed.org or, or you can go for CC0, that is Creative Commons 0. Now, the, here is commercial license, there is public domain. On the middle part, it is open source. What is open source? Then, as the name suggests, and we all know, the source is open. It's open, but what does exactly mean? It means by open source licensing, we are generally promising, as provided by OSI, base, uh, we are promising 10 things as uh, written in the o, uh, OSI. We are going for free distribution. So the uh, uh, we, uh, we can use our software as we wish to and the source code has to be available, the derivative work. So if you consider your software as pizza, so not only you are giving the pizza, for and of, uh, but also you're giving the recipe. And whoever gets the pizza, he will have the right to make his own pizza with it. You can uh, do whatever you wish to do with your pizza. You can play with it, you can throw it, you can whatever you wish to do. So now we are going to divide these open, uh, these open source licenses. There are academic licenses which come from the academic institutions. These academic licenses are MIT and BSD. Uh, these are the example of academic license. So what does academic license do? Academic license is basically, uh, it, it's, uh, 
it is really permissive it puts very little restriction on the end user and uh, the difference between MIT and BSD is that BSD has a specific binary distribution clause while MIT doesn't have one the next one is the permissive license the perm as the name suggests permissive license gives you a lot of permission but less than academic license in permissive license there's a the example of permissive license is Apache in Apache the permissive license does have a clause for other intellectual property rights also like in Apache, Apache there's a clause called grant of patent license uh, which provide which provides a specific law uh, which pro uh, provi uh, provides a specific clause for uh, patents so if you are using a software uh, for which a, a company has op uh, open source their software so for which they are using a particular algorithm which has they have patented but if they are opening it in apache so you can uh, use that software and you won't be threatened that the company will uh, can uh, will sue me for using that patented algorithm there comes the reciprocal licenses the reciprocal licenses as the name suggests reciprocal licenses uh, these licenses are something you have to do uh, some duties in reciprocity gpl is the one for that gpl actually gives us four freedom the freedom to run the software as we wish the freedom to modify our software the freedom to distribute our soft the software uh, licensed under GPL and the free uh, and freedom to redistribute the thing uh, with the modification one has made so now uh, we have got a little bit uh, in the slides from the all the licenses now it's the best practices for the developers which what they can do first one choose a proper license based on the use case so what you are doing by choosing a license is basically you are making a boundary th of your software you are choosing the user base so if you are uh, writing a library or uh, something like that a, a library or module you should choose something which is more permissive in nature so that people can actually use it license a license file uh, there should be a license file in your source code the license file should not only write uh, have the license name but the whole license text altogether uh, for now here i want to mention that mit has a clause that you have to mention the whole license text unless you are mentioning the license text the uh, the terms of mit won't be applicable so for that you need to mention the whole license text in your license file you also have to mention the copyright header as you can see it's the example of requests module where the copyright has a header is there and the license has been mentioned as apache there should be a setup.py for py uh, pi which provides the license in the setup function can uh, license as apache also in the classifier you have to provide the license name mention the uh, if there is a readme file or something introductory similar to that which mentions all the project details you should mention the license name and uh, li license name and direct the license file from there no. if patent is your concern then apache is the one for you or permissive license is the one for you where they have a separate clause for other intellectual property laws please do not invent your own license lawyers actually they do know a little bit so they have uh, written down certain templates you can use license as uh, templates so please do not your own license and please do not merge the licenses so if you are taking mit and if you are putting a certain clause in it by your own 
you are basically not following the MIT. So please do not invent your own license. Try to choose uh, from what you have. This is very important. Please keep your funny bones aside. Actually, I have come across a license which uh, where it has been written, don't be evil. I was like, okay. Uh, there's uh, another license which like, uh, uh, buy me a free beer. So these things does not really go with the license, the document, and these has le other legal implications. Um, I can give you an example uh, that there's a particular case where the, uh, the developer who has invented the license didn't really understand what is the difference between a condition and a covenant. So he has written it and after that the license was not applicable and he had to like give away the software. Open source initiative has a very nice listing of what are, what are the available licenses. So you can follow, uh, choose from there. Also Fedora project has a very nice uh, li a listing. It's not working. This is cho uh, choose, a, um, choose, a li uh, choose and license from there, choosealicense.com. There you'll be having all this uh, small thing which you can actually read and choose a license from there. Choose a popular license. By choosing a license, you're not only choosing a license or a, a, a making boundary, but you're also choosing a community with the, peop uh, the people you uh, want to work with. There are certain licenses by which many people can relate. There are, uh, there are communities regarding those around those licenses. So choose a popular license which is uh, popular in your community in, in the field you want to work. So with that, I have come to an end and thank you. I guess this will be a little bit of help uh, when you are and from the next time onwards, you will be choosing a license. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, so uh, I'm just wondering, uh, with respect to things like data, uh, how would the licensing, licensing apply? So for, uh, for example, you, could write and you can write a code which basically analyzes uh, someone else's data. Okay. Uh, but would the license also apply to, like, would it be considered derived if you actually use someone else's data in order to create a, uh, some kind of program? So uh, what you are writing on the source code, the copyright will apply. There, the software licenses will apply. So I guess what you are uh, trying to say is that whether if uh, I'm working with someone else's data, yeah. if, it is, uh, if it is permitted or not. Uh, yes. In yes. Sense, whether the yeah, whether it's permitted or not, whether I then open source the, the open source the codes without releasing the data. Without releasing the uh, I am not very uh, in in the ignore file. I guess can you uh, uh, yeah. like keep that thing? Yeah. Two different things. Yeah. Your data may be having some yes. different license and still may have to buy it. Okay. But your source code has a different license. It's a completely different thing. So your source, source code. Code. Yes. So source, source so. Code. so source code the source code thing that comes under intellectual property law okay. and working with data uh, someone else's data it it is uh, it under comes and it comes under the purview of some um, like some other law it uh, varies for country from country to country okay. i guess we done thank you thank you, thank you.